In this video, we're going to focus on Descartes' rule of signs. And with his rule, we can get an idea of the zeros of a polynomial function. For example, how many positive zeros do we have, or negative zeros, or even imaginary solutions. So let's look at an example. Let's say that f of x is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2. Now let's make a table. So we're going to have the positive zeros. That's the positive real zeros. The negative real zeros. The imaginary zeros. And also the total. Now notice that we have a polynomial with a degree of 3. So the total number of zeros should be 3. Now, to determine the possible number of positive real zeros, look at the sign changes for f of x. So notice that it changed from positive to negative, so that's one change. And then from negative to negative, that's no change. And from negative to positive, that's another change. So there's two changes. Now, according to Descartes' rule of signs, the number of positive real zeros is either equal to the number of sign changes for f of x, or it could be less than a positive even integer. So one possible answer is 2, because we have two sign changes. Another possible answer is 0, because 2 minus 2 is 0, and 2 is a positive even integer. So the number of positive real zeros is either 2 or 0. So let me separate these two values. Now what about the possible number of negative real zeros? How can we find that? So first, we need to write the function for f of negative x. So it's going to be negative x to the third power minus 2 times negative x squared minus negative x plus 2. Negative x cubed is negative x cubed. And then negative x squared is positive x squared times negative 2, so that stays negative 2x squared. Negative times negative x is positive x. So let's count the number of sign changes. So this doesn't change, that's 0. Here we have 1 change, and this doesn't change. So the total is only 1 sign change. Now, the number of negative real zeros is going to equal the number of sign changes or it can be less than a positive even integer. And if you only have one sign change, the only possible answer is 1. Because if you try to subtract 1 minus 2, negative 1 is not a real thing for uh, counting uh, something. So you can't have a negative number of positive or negative real zeros. So if you have a sign change, if you only have one sign change, then you only have one possible answer for that. So we have one sign change for f of negative x. So there has to be exactly one negative real zero. So now that we have the number of positive and negative real zeros, we can determine the number of imaginary real zeros. So these three columns have to add up to the total three. Two plus one is three, so therefore there's zero imaginary solutions. But for the second row, we need to have two imaginary uh, solutions because 1 plus 2 adds up to 3. So those are the possibilities. So now what we're going to do is actually we're going to solve for x and see which possibility is correct. Either we have two positive real zeros and one negative real zero or we have one negative real zero and two imaginary uh, zeros. So let's find out. So let's set this expression equal to 0. And it turns out that we could factor by grouping. Let's take out the GCF in the first two terms, which is going to be x squared. x cubed divided by x squared is x. Negative 2x squared divided by x squared is negative 2. 
Now let's take out the greatest common factor in the last two terms. So that's going to be negative 1. And so we're going to get x minus 2 again. Now if we factor out x minus 2, we're going to get x squared minus 1. And we could factor x squared minus 1 using the difference of perfect squares. And so that's going to be x plus 1 and x minus 1. So let's set all three factors equal to 0. So we have x minus 2 is equal to 0, x plus 1 is equal to 0, and x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 2, negative 1, and 1. So the positive real zeros are 2 and 1. And the negative real zero is only negative 1. So therefore, this is what we have. We have two positive real zeros and one negative real zero. So the first row is the one that corresponds to the function that we had at the beginning. Let's try this one. Let's say that f of x is equal to x to the fifth power minus 3x to the fourth power plus 3x cubed minus 9x squared and then minus 4x plus 12. So use Descartes' rule to determine the possible number of positive and negative real zeros, and even imaginary zeros as well. And then confirm that answer. So let's make a table first. So we have the positive ones, the negative real zeros, the imaginary ones, and then the total. So let me fix this. Notice that we have a fifth degree polynomial, so the total is going to be 5. Now let's see the number of sign changes for f of x. So this is positive, so this is one sign change, this is another, and then positive to negative, that's another sign change, negative to negative, that is not a sign change, and then negative to positive, that's a sign change. So we have four sign changes. So the positive real zeros could be 4, or it could be less than that by an even integer. So 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So it could be 4, 2, or 0. Now, let's do the same for f of negative x. So this is going to be negative x to the fifth power minus 3 times negative x to the fourth power plus 3 times negative x to the third power, minus 9 times negative x squared, minus 4 times negative x, plus 12. So this is going to be negative x to the fifth. If the exponent is odd, the sign will change. If it's even, it's not going to change. So now let's count the sign changes. So negative to negative, that's not a change. Negative to negative, negative to negative. Negative to positive, one sign change. Positive to positive. So there's only one sign change for f of negative x. So because it's only one sign change, there's only one possible answer. It's 1. We can't do 1 minus 2 and get negative 1. So the number for negative real zeros will be just one. So now we could determine the number of imaginary solutions. The total will always remain 5. So 4 plus 1 is already 5, so this is going to be 0. 2 plus 1 is 3, so this has to be 2 because 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. And then 1 plus 4 is 5. So those are the possibilities. Now let's see which of these three possibilities is the one that actually applies for this function? So the only way to do that is to solve for x.
let's set this equal to 0. Now we can't factor by grouping or by substitution. So we need to list the possible rational zeros. So possible factors of 12 are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And factors of 1 is just 1. So let's start with 1. Let's see if 1 is a, a 0. So it's 1 to the 5th power minus 3 times 1 to the 4th power plus 3 times 1 cubed minus 9 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 12. So this is 1 minus 3 plus 3 minus 9 minus 4 plus 12. So negative 3 and 3 cancels. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Negative 4, negative 8 minus 4, that's negative 12. And then plus 12, that's 0. So one of the answers is x is equal to 1. So now let's use synthetic division to get the other zeros. So let's start with the 0 that we do have, x equals 1. And the coefficients are 1x to the 5th, negative 3, 3, negative 9, negative 4 and 12. So let's bring down the 1. So 1 times 1 is 1 and then we need to add negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2 and then multiply. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2 and then 3 plus negative 2 is 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. 1 times negative 8, negative 8 and then negative 4 plus negative 8 and negative 12 and 12 and negative 12 is 0. Now, this was x to the 5th, so this is going to decrease by 1. That's going to be associated with x to the 4th. So we have x to the 4th minus 2x squared plus x minus 8. And then, wait, I'm missing something. Let's do that again. This is supposed to be negative 2x cubed. And then plus 1x squared minus 8x minus 12. Now, we can't factor that expression as of yet, so we need to find another potential 0. And then we'll use synthetic division on this expression. So we tried 1 already. Let's try negative 1. Now, you can plug in negative 1 into the first uh, function or into this reduce expression. I'm going to use the reduce expression. So negative 1 raised to the fourth minus 2 times negative 1 to the third power plus negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1 minus 12. Let's make sure that it's equal to 0. So this is 1 and then negative 1 to the third is negative 1 times negative 2 that's plus 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 8 times negative 1 is plus 8 and then minus 12. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 8 is 9, and 3 plus 9 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So negative 1 is another answer. Now let's use synthetic division with negative 1 and reduce polynomial expression. So let's put negative 1 here. So we have 1x to the fourth, negative 2x cubed, 1x squared, negative 8x, and negative 12. So negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 2 plus negative 1 is negative 3. And then negative 1 times negative 3, that's 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. Negative 1 times 4, that's negative 4. And negative 8 plus negative 4 is negative 12. And then negative 1 times negative 12 is 12. So we started with x to the fourth, so now this is going to be associated with x cubed. So we now have 1x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x minus 12. So we can factor this expression by factoring by grouping. Negative 3 divided by 1 is the same as negative 12 divided by 4. If the first two terms have the same ratio as the last two terms, then you could factor by grouping. So I'm going to take out the GCF, which is x squared. So I'm going to be left with x minus 3. And then for the last two terms, I'm going to take out a 4. So I'm going to have x minus 3 as well. So 
So if I take out x minus 3, I'm left with x squared plus 4. So that's how you can factor this expression. Now I'm going to add the factored form of those zeros to get f of x in its completely factored form. So it's going to be x minus 1 and x plus 1. So that's equal to f of x. So now let's determine all of the zeros. It's important to understand that this expression can be factored to x plus 2i and x minus 2i. If you set each factor equal to 0, x will be equal to 3, 1, and negative 1. Now, if you set x squared plus 4 equal to 0, x squared will be equal to negative 4. And if you take the square root of both sides, the square root of negative 4 is going to be 2i, but plus or minus 2i. So x can be 2i, or it can be negative 2i. Now, which row is correct or applies to the function f of x? Is it 410, 212, or 014? Well, let's find out. Notice that we have two positive real zeros. So that means that this column, or this row rather, is the one that applies. And as you can see, we have one negative real zero, and we have two imaginary zeros, or two imaginary solutions. So this is the row that applies for f of x. Two positive real zeros, one negative real zero, and two imaginary solutions. So now you know how to use Descartes rule to get an idea of what type of positive and negative uh, zeros that a function may have. And you can confirm it by actually solving for x. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a good day.